don't need to tell you what's at stake here. We just have to run the clock out, let it go into overtime. But, Coach, we never went in overtime, and this is for the finals. Bridget, when you're coach, you can call all the shots. Now just do what I'm telling you. Sticks up. Laurel's on three. One, two, three. Laurel! They said you'd gone to Asia. Is that is that correct? <laughs> oh well, three years. I bet you know fluent Mandarin. <laughs> Who's that young lady? The captain? Oh, well, you have been gone a while. That is Bridget. Up. Hi, Candace. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be shaking hands and kissing babies? Headmaster York wants to see us. Thank you for coming in, Miss Burwood. Of course, Headmaster York. You must be very busy with your campaign heating up. Well, it's heating up a bit, but I feel confident. Thank you for asking. Is this about me or my mother? That flippant attitude may serve you well in some circles, Miss Burwitt, but it's not in your best interests here. Look, I'm sorry about the shark suck thing. Sharks suck? Well, they do. Yet another note of disappointment. Ms. Burwitt, part of my job here is protecting Edgington. If we let someone slide by, it devalues everyone's diploma. And? And I have your five-week progress report. You are failing both English and calculus. That's what this is about? I'll just get a tutor or do some extra credit, whatever. I'm afraid it's not quite that simple here at Edgington, especially with core classes like these. I have no choice but to place you on academic probation. Students on academic probation may not participate in extracurricular activities, including sports, which I'm afraid means no lacrosse. What? But, but we just kicked St. Paul's butt, and we win the playoffs next week, and we go to nationals. I'm the captain, and trials for Eurotour are coming up. I could get a scholarship. You can't kick me off the team. All of that is a distant second to your education. Your studies come first, full stop. We understand, and we couldn't agree with you more. Good, because the alternative is not very pleasant. If you are not mastering these classes by midterms, you will not graduate from Edgington. We have a decades-long track record of excellence. We do not tolerate failure. You will not be allowed to repeat your senior year at this institution. I know it doesn't feel like it, but this is all up to you. Mom, this is ridiculous and you know it. You've got to do something. I mean, you're chairman of Edgington's board of directors. There's absolutely nothing I can do, Bridget. This is one mistake of yours I cannot fix. Well, the board won't like it if we don't make it to nationals. What is wrong with you? Thanks for understanding, Candace. York is giving you the benefit of the doubt. I know what's really going on. Yeah, and what is that? Bobby Berry. Spying on me. Classy move. I wouldn't hear things if you didn't keep giving me things to hear. Yeah, well, I think you're just jealous I have somebody. 
I'm gonna ignore that. This is serious, Bridget. This is the most serious it's ever been. You cannot fail out. I'm not going to. I know you're not going to, because you're gonna break up with Bobby tonight so you can focus on your studies for the rest of the year. You can't make me do that. I can tell Coach Rubino to never let you on the team again, and she will listen to me. Why? Because I recommended her to York. You just have to win everything, don't you? Someday you'll understand it's not about winning. Yeah, well, that's where you're wrong, Mom. It's all about winning. Oh, hey, Rumi. Hey. I was getting worried. It's such a long day. What? I heard. You've lost our fearless leader. You should know that you don't have to lie to me. You know? Somebody's on next week's roster. You elicit us out on academic probation. It's okay, it's this, it's senior year. It's a ridiculously hard school. It's tough for everyone. And I already talked to my study group. You are totally cool to join. Even though I made fun of you guys for being nerds? We made fun of you for being too cool for study groups. <laughs> <laughs> you would have fit right in. So, who's gonna be captain now that I'm forced into temporary retirement? Well, you know, they, they normally choose a senior and uh, someone who's really good with the plays, so... That's awesome. You'll do a great job. Thank you. Here to fix your laptop, ma'am. Oh my god, you're crazy. How'd you get past the front desk? The visiting hours do not apply to the computer technicians. Hi, Danny. Hi, Bobby. Could you give us a minute? Oh, yeah. Wouldn't want to get in the way of getting your lap by your top service. Stop. Oh my god. Have fun, you guys. My mom dropped a huge bomb. What is it? She said I can't see you anymore. What? Why? She thinks it's your fault. This is ridiculous. So what does this mean? Two months of calls and sexting until you get your GPA up? Not even. My mom's like a detective. She watches the phone bill. So this is it? Just like that? Tonight is our last night? I heard you were having some computer issues. Well, um, yeah, he was just finishing. Um, that should get your hard drive up and running, ma'am. Call me if you need any more assistance. I didn't know Mr. Barry Moonlights as a technician. He seems to possess an enviable list of skills. Oh, was that guy a student here too? I didn't know. Is there something else? You do know who I am, don't you? I'm your new faculty resident. Oh. Are you gonna report this? I'm kind of in a lot of hot water already. I know. You actually reading a book? Don't we have a quiz on this today? Which one's this? No, no, it's not this one. That's the other one. I'm just kidding. I'm just oh kidding. My God, you're <laughs> crazy. I'm just kidding. Where's Miss Patterson? I was called back early from my sabbatical to take over while Mrs. Patterson is on maternity leave. 
My name is Jane Cunningham. Miss Patterson's pregnant? Yes. And suffering extreme morning sickness. She'll be on bed rest for the remainder of her term. Any more questions? Good. Point of view. Was your reading assignment last night written in the third person or omniscient point of view? Bridget. Um, I mean, it's the same thing, right? Bridget's heart began to race. She wasn't used to not knowing the answer. Or rather, she did know the answer, but she had too much pride to risk getting it wrong. And so remained silent. That's actually third person limited. We know the thoughts of one person and the story is centered around them. If you wanted an omniscient point of view, you can get into someone else's thoughts too, for example. Bridget looked over at Danny and mouthed, help me. Danny, who's known for being a smart ass, came up with a self-aware response that only betrayed her deep-rooted fear of taking things far too seriously. Aren't you clever? You're correct, but mind your language in my classroom. Understood? All right, then. Mrs. Patterson wanted to make sure you got last week's exams returned to you. Apparently, you all have issues distinguishing points of view. Hey, it's OK. I got you. Don't worry about it. Miss Berwit, may I see you a moment? Look, I, I know I'm not supposed to see Bobby. It won't happen again. I just really appreciate it if you didn't tell my mom. Tell her what exactly? You had your computer repaired. How did you feel about the questions on the test? Well, clearly I missed the boat on a lot of them. Yes. The thing about Mrs. Patterson, the dear, is that she's very ambiguous when it comes to asking questions. May I? Ah, yes, see? This question is open to interpretation. The timeline is viewed here. And this last one is strictly subjective opinion. Office before first period tomorrow morning, You work here, why don't you look up his record? Tell me about you and Bobby. Did my mother put you up to this? Well, you can tell her we broke up and I won't be seeing him again. Do you love him? Seriously, what's going on? I'm just trying to get to know my new residence. Really should be getting to glass. When I was your age, I was head over heels in love with my boyfriend. My parents forbade me from dating him. Said he was a bad influence on me. Okay. What happened? 
I didn't see him anymore. And I always regretted it. You must have gotten over it by now. Never underestimate the power of missed opportunity, no matter how long ago it was. Are you being responsible? Miss Cunningham, I don't understand what you're asking me. Is he pressuring you? No, no. Besides, my mom made it so that we can't even text. So sex isn't exactly on the table, or the bed for that matter. The male libido is a powerful force, second only to its counterpart, the male ego. Miss Cunningham, I'd love to stay and chat, but I really should be getting to class. Apparently, I'm failing all of them. You're afraid he'll lose interest in you if you don't sleep with him. Why are you helping me? That's what friends do for one another. All right, I love you too. Good night. Wow, I've never seen you so happy talking to your mom before. Well, it wasn't my mom. <laughs> well, I know it wasn't Bobby since you've been like forbidden to talk to him. It was Bobby. Oh, Bridget, what are you doing? Nothing. Do you want to get in more trouble? No, I'm not going to get in trouble because my mom can't trace this. Why? Because it's from a time before call tracing was invented? Where did you get this thing? No, I've never heard <laughs> Miss Cunningham gave it to me. Miss Cunningham? Why? So I could talk to my boyfriend. Why would Miss Cunningham care about you and Bobby? I don't know. Maybe she has the hots for him. You can't even buy these anymore. She must be like three times your age. Oh, oh gosh. You know, well, she does use adult diapers. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. It's perfect. It's for you. Oh, wow. We save the day. Future elite party. Hey. Wow. Okay. 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 That sounds really pretentious. You're just jealous. We yeah. clearly established that I'm not jealous. <laughs> I didn't get one. Well, clearly you're not as special as I am. Oh. Okay. Gold on Okay. Below. Okay. Gold. Yeah. Here. Catch it. <laughs> Work on those reflexes. Elite. Oh. Okay. Miss okay. Elite. Yes, Bridget? Do you have another copy of my book? I think I left mine in my room. No, I don't have another copy. But I do have your copy. How did you get this? I found it on the floor after class. It must be yours, right? Yeah, thanks. You didn't happen to find a bookmark in here, did you? No. I'm sorry you lost your place. Really? <laughs> yes. 
Quite the homely little thing, wasn't it? No, no, not at all. Just not what I was expecting. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> so, you had something on your mind. Yeah, um, you wrote notes in my book. Yes. Not just notes, the answers. My dear, I think you're old enough to hear this. Life isn't fair. Oh, I think I know that. Oh, you don't know the half of it. This world is built by the people on the inside. A little advantage can mean the difference between living a common, unremarkable life and a life that can change the world. I'm not trying to change the world, Miss Cunningham. I'm just trying to get back on the team and see my boyfriend. Yes, that's all well and good, but there's a bigger picture here, don't you see? It's about claiming what is yours, Bridget. But you can't just wait for it to come to you. You've got to reach out and grab it. Grab what's rightfully yours. It's yours by birth. With a little help, you can have everything. And I'm that little help. Really? Don't imagine for a second this doesn't happen everywhere, including Edgington Academy. How do you think we have such a flawless graduation record? You'd be amazed to know the names of others who have had help making it through the rigors of this environment. Like whom? Do you really think top college football stars are graduating unassisted? Not a chance. Their focus is elsewhere, as should yours be. Why me? I mean, why are you doing this for me? Because I see myself in you, Bridget. And I don't want you to end up like me. We both deserve better than that. But you're a teacher at one of the most prestigious private schools in the world. <sighs> yes, well, even then, I'm just teaching babies to color and toddlers to count. So I'm just a toddler to you? Quite the opposite. You're a young woman full of great promise. You are the exception to every rule. People like you are rare but I know greatness when I see it. We all have a purpose in this life. You were meant to lead others, and I was meant to help people like you become the leaders you were born to be. That's just the way it is. Birth control pills? I hope we'll be seeing you for the future elite party in a couple of weeks. Bobby will be there too. It's sure to be a memorable evening. Hey, you scared me. Sorry. Working on an English essay? Yeah. Wow, you wrote a lot of notes. Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm glad to see you, like, taking it seriously. Don't sound so surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Ow. What's the matter? 
Oh, nothing, nothing. You hurt your shoulder at practice? Not exactly. You got your laurels tattoos without me? It's tradition to get them before the semifinals. I tried to find you, but you didn't even come to watch us practice. I was studying. Studying or uh, spending time with your new BFF? Studying. Look, I tried. I'm sorry. But I'm the captain. We can get them together when you're back on the team. Whatever. So, late night dining hall? I have work to do. All right. Good luck. A minus. That's great. We both worked really, really hard. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. You keep this up. You could have your choice of any university. Applications are due soon, you know. Yeah, I, I know. Hey, Mom, do you know this new teacher, Jane Cunningham? Who? Jane Cunningham. She's filling in for Miss Patterson while she's on maternity leave. Ms. Patterson is pregnant? Apparently. Yes, yes. Look, Bradley, I have to go. Yes, really, because my boss just walked in. Okay. How do they expect you to get good grades, have extracurricular activities, and college applications? It's barbaric. I don't even know how I'm gonna write this personal statement, whatever it is. Okay, let me see. Ah, sum up your entire purpose in life, one page, single space, at a time you're struggling to figure out who you are for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you most proud of? Lacrosse, I guess. Hmm. Must be hard for you not being on the team. <laughs> yeah, well, I've only been gone a couple of weeks, and it's like I never existed. I mean, they got their laurels tattoos without me. Those traitors. Yeah. Hey. Let's you and I go together. I've always wanted a tattoo. Seriously? What, do you think I'm too old for one? No, 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 of course not. Then it's settled. Right after we finish your personal statement, we're getting inked. <laughs> Great. Well, how long will this take? Not long if we put our minds to it. So tell me more about your proudest accomplishments. Mm, I guess I'd start with lacrosse. Athletics, like war, is an art. If you excel at one, who knows what interests lie dormant. When you're ready, then you can add some leaves or add some petals.
remember thick to thin. How was practice? Good. Are you handling everything all right? What do you mean? Captain's a stressful position. You have to be a leader. All the girls are looking to you to set a healthy tone. It's not easy. Danny, just go to your party. Awesome. The head of admissions at Swarthmore is actually a good friend of mine, so let me speak to her and see what I can do. If they were any closer, I'd have to write them up for inappropriate display of affection. No, they're, they're just friends. A man's body, no matter how faithful his heart, is powerless against a pretty girl in a tight dress. Have you been taking the pills I gave you? It's been two weeks now. Oh, I, I, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Oh, if you're not, little Miss Buxom over there most certainly is. I have another engagement later this evening. It would be a shame to let an empty apartment go to waste. Miss Cunningham. She's out for the night. She said we could use her apartment. Use it? For what? For whatever. Don't you think she's a little too into you? Not as into me as you're about to be. Sorry, I didn't know anyone was in here. I just finished whipping up the calculus exam. It's uh, it's straightforward, but I it's subtle in its uh, in its competency assessment. I just came to get my lunch bag out of the fridge before the drive home. something different about you the other day. What? It's the beard. You didn't have it before, did you? Um, no, I, I had it, actually. Um, I've always had it. I think it gives me a certain, you know, professorial thing. <laughs> 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 You are so sexy. You are so sexy. Oh my god. I can't believe it. You're so sexy. Do you love me? What? 
Do you love me? Yes, yes, I love you. Then show me. still here. Is he? Oh, no. He left a while ago. I just thought I'd clean up a bit. So? How was it? Uh, uh, thanks for making it happen. Here's your key back. Keep it. Mi casa es su casa. Got a little something else to give you. What is that? Your calculus midterm. Uh, What's wrong? I'm not sure this feels right. I don't think you understand just how far I had to go to get that for you. I never asked you to do that. I did what I had to do, so you can get your life back and get on with your larger purpose. And I really appreciate all your help, but I've been studying. I, I can do this. You want me to just delete that? Maybe that would be best. What have we been doing all this for? None of this matters unless we ace this test. That's your chance for Euro tour your relationship with your mother and with Bobby. You won't be allowed to see him ever again if you fail, remember? We've got everything we need to ace this exam right here. I guess I was wrong about you. Wait. Yes, Bridget? Nothing. Stress if you didn't finish. Quality over quantity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. something? Yeah, my underwear. The skimpy red ones? Yes. You're not wearing them, are you? No. <laughs> hey, well, help me find them. You know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you and Mrs. Cunningham are a little bit more than friends. Yeah, you caught me. I'm having an affair with my English lit teacher. I'm not gonna tell anyone. As long as I can join in. Into older women, are you? Hey, when it comes to a threesome, what? You're disgusting. Hey, 
We better get out of here. I don't want you here while she's here. Well, my parents are driving up this weekend for my match. I'd love to meet you. I was wondering if you would like to go to dinner with my family. Yes. As long as we go someplace far off campus so that Candace won't find out. Yeah, sure. No, that's not what I meant. I just, I have to get my grades back up and get her off my back and we can show her what a great catch you are. Okay, I guess I'm okay with that. Where have you been? Why do you care? Were you with Miss Cunningham? Not really. What does that mean? I slept at Jane's, but she was not there. Okay. Bridget? Bridget? You need to listen to me. That woman is no good. What are you talking about? I know she's been helping you. So aren't teachers supposed to help you? <laughs> Not like this. Don't tell me that this is your handwriting in the margins. Give it. And I saw you yesterday. In calculus? What did you see? You had a test that was already filled out. And how would I have that? You know what? I don't know. But I know it has something to do with her. She's going to ruin you. And like, I'm the only one with secrets around here. What is that supposed to mean? Hello. I'll be right there. Mom? Mm. Good afternoon, Miss Burwitt. I thought it best we do this in person. Congratulations, Bridget. You've made tremendous strides. Ah, I read your English essay. It's masterful, so on point. Ah, and Mr. Jeter was thrilled with your calculus midterm. I don't remember the last time I saw a student make such a remarkable turnaround. You've done Edgington proud. Welcome back to the lacrosse team. Horace, I know you're my campaign manager, but I still call the shots. And there's no way I'm gonna show my face in support of that woman. No! Horace, I gotta go. Bridget's here. I am so very proud of you. Headmaster York is amazed, but I am not. Cheers. <laughs> I didn't doubt for a second that you could do this. You are, after all, Gerwitt. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. You've earned the right to have Bobby back in your life. Thanks. So why don't you go call him and tell him the good news, and I'll start your laundry. Candace doing laundry? Oh, don't give me a hard time. I'm still your mother. <laughs> They're just to regulate my period. Don't lie to me. Jane Cunningham gave you these. Yeah, but she's just trying to help. You are never to see her again. Well, that's not really possible, Candace. She's our faculty resident. That woman is sick. Do you understand? She's that? a teacher. She's trying to help me. She cares about me. Okay, please, please. 
Bridget, listen to me. Why do you have to control everything? This is not about control. I am on your side. Jane Cunningham is on my side. You just happen to be my mother. Why are you doing this? Nice to see you too, Candy. We agreed to stay out of each other's lives. Your daughter came to me for help. You call this help? She took those from my purse. She's 17. I had hoped that your leave would have given you time to think. Oh, I did nothing but think. Have you ever read Kawabata? There's a lyrical subtlety in his native language that is sadly lost in translation. You do know that Edgington is still paying for Hannah's therapy. She had to put off college for a year, at least. Am I to be held accountable for every student with a weak constitution? I'm getting Bridget assigned to another English class and another dorm. What if she's happy where she is? We had an agreement, Jane. I'm certainly holding up my end, Candy. Stay away from my daughter. She told you that she doesn't want to stay away, didn't she? She needs me, Candy, more than she's ever needed you, and you can't stand it. Good to see you too, Candace. Maybe I'll drop by the house sometime. Did you know this is hot? You can go over five, or you can do it like this. It's Miss Berwick, may I see you a moment? For a moment. <laughs> God, I can so turn the teacher thing on when I want to, can't I? So, hey, I can't believe you never came to tell me the good news. Yeah, thanks for all your help. It meant a lot. It was nothing. So, now that we've crossed that hurdle, it's time to get back to those college admissions. The first step is an engaging personal statement. We need to work on yours post haste. So, why don't you grab your things? I can't. Well, why not? I'm with my study group, and it's really important if I'm going to stay on the team. You got back on the team without their help. You can stay on the team without their help. I just can't right now. Fine. Tonight, I had dinner plans, but I can cancel them. I don't need this anymore. I have to go. Jane, um, oh, did, did your bulb go out? I could call maintenance. Well, I was just about to head over to the cafeteria to get some dinner, if you'd like to join. I mean, if you're not too busy. I just thought maybe we should talk about our, our uh, well, about, about us. Stop thinking about the other night, which was so wonderful. You asked me to express certain feelings, uh, and I was just wondering if that was because you had similar feelings towards me. Okay, maybe we could talk about this later. But I have to go. Uh, sure, sure, of course. <laughs> uh, um, uh, sorry to have interrupted. Whatever you're doing. In the dark.
So my parents really like you, if you can't tell. Yeah, <laughs> I like them too. Bridget, what is it? <sighs> what if, what if I don't get into college? What if I can't make it outside of Edgington? Since the girl who just kicked ass in all her midterms? I don't deserve to be here. I was just born into the right family. Well, Miss Cunningham seems to think you're pretty special. Right? What's going on between you two? Whatever it is, you can tell me. Bridget. You said there was an emergency? Right. College admissions deadlines are fast approaching, and we need to work on your personal statement. Miss Cunningham. Jane. Miss Cunningham, I really appreciate everything you've done for me, but I should really just do my own college applications. That's a very mature thing to say. I think I should start taking responsibility for myself. Right. So, tattoos? Thanks for getting them all. I'll read them over and let you know if I have any questions. Please have a cookie. I'd love to, but I, I have practice in the morning and I should just get to sleep. I spent all night decorating these. At least take a few back to the room for you and Danielle. What is that? You went without me. We were supposed to get those together. It wasn't about you. It was about my team. My friends. I'm sorry, I'm your friend! When you got kicked off the team, they all just went on with their lives. But I dropped everything for you! You can't just walk away from me. My mother was right about you. Bridget. Bridget. Bridget! Bridget, come back here! Bridget! 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 Jane. Um, uh, I was afraid I'd done something to upset you. Why would you think that? I don't know. You know that thing you wanted to talk about? That thing? I told you we could talk about it later. OK, I'm ready. We can talk about it right now. Oh, uh, um. Well, that's sort of a private matter, don't you think? No. OK. OK. Um, listen, Jane, uh, uh, don't you think it'd be better if we did this privately? I mean, maybe we could have dinner. Dinner? Yeah. Why would I have dinner with you? Uh, what? Do you really think someone like me would go out with someone like you? You can't dress yourself. Your breath smells. Your beard is disgusting. Your hair is falling out. Your penis is minuscule. No one likes you. You're only good at one subject, the most boring subject. And right now, you've got soup on your face. And you don't even know it. Well, doesn't he?
What's going on? They are putting me in Pinehurst House. But that's the dorm for kids who try to hurt themselves? Yeah, it is. I don't understand. Well, apparently there was a report that my eating disorder's back. Is it? No. Who would say that? Who do you think? We, we've got to do something. We, we've got to tell somebody. Tell somebody. You don't think I've already tried? You think they're going to believe me? My shuttle's waiting. If you want to find me, look for the short bus. Bobby, are you okay? I've been arrested. Miss Cunningham was a setup. I had to come here in jail. Okay. Whatever they tell you, she made it look like, like I. Okay, I gotta go. I'm so sorry, but I thought it was you. I swear. Bobby. Bridget, come in. I just opened a bottle of wine. Why are you doing this? Doing what? I know what you did to Bobby and Danny. Look, whatever happened to your friends, I'm sure they got what they deserved. They weren't good for you. You're not good for me. I'd watch your tongue if I were you. You saw how easy it was for your grades to get better. How hard do you think it would be for them to get worse again? Miss Cunningham. Jane, you know you can call me Jane. Mom? Are you okay? I just got off the phone with the headmaster. He told me about Bobby. Yeah. His dad's on the way down to post bail. 
That woman is insane. The board in York believe Bobby is innocent, and we think the police will too. Of course he's innocent. She should be the one in jail. She almost was. Once. Her three-year sabbatical was not voluntary. It was prompted by an alleged obsession with a student. So she's done this before. How could you let her come back? Why didn't you turn her in? We had no solid proof, certainly nothing that would stand up in court. We decided our best option was to send Jane as far away as possible until it all blew over and poor Hannah could get the help she needed. We decided who's we. The board, Headmaster York. Something like this can ruin a school, Bridget. Even an allegation. But she's insane. You have to do something. We're going to meet on it tomorrow She's morning. dangerous, Mom. We don't have a choice, Bridget. Do you have any idea how hard it is to fire a tenured teacher? And I can't afford a scandal now. You don't get it, Mom. It's not just Danny and Bobby she's after. Jane's been helping me. She changed my grades. She wrote the lit essay for me. And she gave me the answers to the calculus midterm. I'm sorry. I, I know it was wrong, but, 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 but I have the essay notes in her handwriting, and, and we can use it as proof that she cheated. Hopefully, it's enough to get her fired, maybe even sent away. I'm really sorry. No, I, I know it was wrong. I didn't mean for it to happen. I, it just did. Please say something. Don't just sit there. The same thing happened to me. Here at Edgington, 25 years ago. Oh my god. Jane always had a brilliant mind. Socially inept, mildly delusional, but completely brilliant. It, it started out as nothing. I would come in late from play rehearsal, exhausted, and she'd talk me through the homework. But it kept progressing. I had no time to study. I was class president. I was captain of the volleyball team. I was lead in the fall play. And the more I took on, the more I needed her. And I let her do it for me. And before I knew it, it just... Cornell? Jane. She did my application. She got me in. But look what it got me. This. A career. Standing in the community. Respect. Everything I always wanted. You're not going to do anything. Are you? And you're afraid she'll expose you. Cornell? Jane? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta go. 
What? Are you serious? If you don't play by her rules, she will out you as a cheater. You'll be kicked out of Edgington. You'll be a pariah at any Ivy League school. This is your future, Bridget. The rest of your life we're talking about. What, so I'm just supposed to play along? Yes. And then you can go off to Cornell and start over and forget any of this ever happened. Have you forgotten it, Mom? I'm sorry, I, I just had to see you. I let myself in, I fell asleep waiting for you. I, I hope you don't mind. Of course not. Are you all right? I don't like being alone. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for what Bobby did to you. I should have seen it coming. He was always talking about you. I just can't believe he did what he did. I'll be fine. Don't you worry about me. And Danny, she was just so jealous of me, of you and me. At times, we don't want to see the signs of illness in the people we love. I realize now just what you were trying to do for me. I understand now the way things work in the real world. I didn't get that before, but I get that now. I'm just here to help. I know. Just like you helped my mother. She told you. I saw something in your mother. I knew it from the moment we met. She had something. Everyone was drawn to her. She had the light. And you were such good friends. We were. We were indeed. And you did so much to help her to get her where she is today. I'm sorry you drifted apart. It was inevitable. But I'm happy for your mother, and I'm happy I could help her in some small way. You have the gift, Bridget. I saw it in you the very same way as I saw it in your mother. Everyone's born with a purpose. I recognized at a very early age that I don't have that light, that spark that you and your mother have. But what I do have is the ability to recognize those lights in others 
and help those light bearers achieve their destinies. You really think I'm a light bearer, Miss Cunningham? Jane? Oh, I know so. It's my gift, remember? Your light is bright, my dear. I have so much to learn. Teach me. Help me. this number, I better get it. Hello? Yes, it is. Are you serious? Uh, oh my God, yes, th thank you. Thank you so much. I'm a finalist for Euro Tour. Bridget, that's amazing. Congratulations. Tryouts are this weekend, upstate. Oh. So exciting. I have a great idea. How about you come up with me? To the trials? Yes, we'll have so much fun on the trip. And maybe on the way back, we can stop in New York City, catch a show, see a couple museums. I don't know, just, just the two of us? Yeah, a weekender. We'll have a blast. OK. Bridget, is something wrong? You are one crazy bitch. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Come on, let's go. We're not going anywhere. But what about your tour? Jane, what? stop. I've had enough of you. My mother has had enough of you. All those girls you've ruined have had enough of you. You're evil. And you're going away for a long, long time. Bridget. Don't do this. You need me. I don't need you. All that stuff about you recognizing light and helping others is just your sick way of justifying your lonely and obsessive existence. I don't need you. I have never needed you. No one has ever needed you. Bridget, listen to what you're saying. You could have everything, and you're throwing it all away. I want you to admit yourself to St. Abigail's psychiatric ward. It's a lockdown treatment facility. I will expose you for the cheat that you are. You will never graduate from here, much less go to Cornell or any other reputable university for that matter. Fine. So be it. Headmaster York is right outside these doors. Now you come to your senses, or I go straight out there and I tell him all about your cheating and your mother's as well. Jane, I'm giving you a chance. I won't go to the FBI if you just comply. FBI. I'm afraid giving prescription drugs to a minor is a felony. Oh, and those tapes of Bobby and I having sex? <laughs> I think the FBI frowns upon child pornography. <laughs> Yes. 
You think you can blackmail me? Miss Burwood, are you all right? Why would you do all that alone? That was reckless. Indeed. You could have been killed. That woman is very dangerous. Now you say so. You should have never let Jane Cunningham come back. And you know it. Yes, well, it's over now, thanks to you. Hold on, Headmaster. I know what you did. I know you played a part in Jane Cunningham coming back to Edgington. And I know you are in cahoots with Candace on the cover-up. But we're going to put all of that behind us right now. Here's how it's going to go. Mom, effective immediately, you're going to turn in your resignation as chairman of the Edgington board. Agreed? Agreed. And Headmaster York, you are going to make Edgington history and grant me a second chance. A repeat of my senior year. As well as reinstate my position as the lacrosse captain. Once the very able current captain completes the season. In exchange, I will maintain a 3.5 or above GPA throughout the year. Fairly and squarely. No cheating. Agreed? Agreed. You're so brave. If I had half your courage when I was your age. Hey, no more looking back, Mom. Only moving forward. <laughs> You did the right thing. Giving up your position on the board and coming clean to cheating in school. I'm really proud of you. And I'm really sorry it had such an impact on your campaign. Hey, I think you would have been the best city councilwoman probably ever. <laughs> But I'm not sorry it happened. Things are better now. Such a weight lifted. I don't know what I was so afraid of. I haven't been this relaxed in 25 years. <laughs> well, the Burwood is never down for long. What's next? Uh, another campaign? Another board? President? <laughs> I know exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be enjoying you the last few weeks that you're here before you go off to college, because there's nothing more important to me. The rest, it'll all fall into place. If she favors you, love her. If she wounds you, love her. If she tears your heart to pieces, and as it gets older and stronger, it will tear deeper. Love her. Love her. Love her. Everybody needs a little help sometimes. It's nothing to be ashamed of. You have a bright future ahead of you. Trust me. Your light is very bright, my dear.